welcome back to another episode of the Buffalo Happy Hour. Mike, what's going on, man? Derek, we traveled. We're in North Buffalo, and I'm excited about it because this location has been booming out of nowhere. So we finally got the chance to sit down with the owners, and we'll start with introductions and then dive right into all the questions that we have for you guys. Great. So you want to introduce yourself? I am Lisa Raniello, and I'm the owner of the Garage Cafe and Lounge on Hurdle Avenue. What's the address? 1127. Cool. 1127 Hurdle. So it's literally right next to the Delaware exit off the 33. Yep. Yep. We are the entrance to the business district. That's yeah. how we like to call ourselves. Oh, well, that's cool. The oh, beginning no. of the party. It's a one, it? it's a 198, right? Not the 33. It's 198. 198. I'll correct myself. Yeah, yeah. There we go. So going down that way is just the start of all the businesses? Um, well, yeah. We, I mean, we, I consider us the start of the businesses, mm-hmm. but the, you know, the main hub is like five blocks up. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. So what made you choose this spot for the garage? Well, this spot has a lot of history for us. This was our auto repair shop for 25 years. Um, so we had the building um, and because we grew up in this neighborhood, my husband and I, you know, since we were kids, you know, we graduated from St. Margaret's down the road. We, all our children, we were married there. Our children were baptized there. We owned the house next door. It's where our kids grew up. While well, my husband ran the auto repair shop here. Um, so that being in this neighborhood is, you know, where we came from. We don't live here anymore, but this has always been home. And it still is. People ask, where are you from? We're from North Buffalo. Sure. Um, just, just where we've been all for a long time. And we uh, have a lot of warmth for this community. And we feel like these are our people. You know, we know people that will drive by, and wave to us. We've known them for 30 years or we've seen them for 30 years. Um, so we like, we're very family orientated and we just like that feel that you get in this neighborhood. Sure. I, it makes a ton of sense now that you say that this used to be an actual garage because I mean, you, you stuck with that theme going through the whole place. So do you want to kind of explain how that transformation happened? Like uh, an auto garage, you don't necessarily associate with a restaurant. So how did you do that? It was not planned. Trust me. (laughs) (laughs) We are, we are good at recreating ourselves when life throws you a curve. Mm -hmm. And life threw us another curve, and uh, my husband was driving to work one morning. Uh, He was riding his Harley. It was a beautiful sunny day in May, and he got run over and broke all the bones in both legs from the knees down and was flat in a bed for three months and learned how to walk for a year and a half. So we had no one to run the auto repair shop, so we had to shut it down and just let it lie and just focus on trying to get him up and running. Um, uh, Shortly before his accident, I owned a little coffee shop cafe, um, that I had opened, um, I think about a year before the accident. And I tried to keep running once he got hurt, but he was 24 hour care, I couldn't do it. So we said, let's just shut it down. Right now we'll focus on this. We'll regroup, we'll re- see what we're gonna do. We've been self-employed our whole lives. We've mm-hmm. always you know, created something and built it. And we wanted to continue doing that. Um, we thought he wanted to retire from the auto repair business. It would be very hard for him to do that again today anyways with the condition of his legs. So I said, why don't we do what I do? And I've never been a restaurateur or an owner, but I've always been the cook, the baker of mm-hmm. our very large Italian family. Um, it's always something that I did. It's something I love to do. Um, we got a little taste of it with the coffee shop, which we both enjoyed a lot. And we love the socialness of it, too. So we said, let's, let's see if we can flip this. We knew this was the neighborhood for it. We knew what we had in our heads. This was the best neighborhood to do that and to make this, you know, thought, this plan to come to life. So it wasn't really a very hard decision to do that here. Um, so we just jumped in and we just started doing it. So the first step was basically construction phase. Yes, and, construction. And demo, right? Yeah, that was like eight months. Yeah, it <laughs> took us eight, because we built everything ourselves. Yeah, so you let's know. talk about that. So what yeah. was the layout of the current space? Because now it's fairly open. When it was the auto repair shop, it was completely open, just like it is. Okay. We had uh, a lift over on this side. We had two lifts on this side, where my counter is, where you walk in the door and the server's counter, and the kitchen was um, the office hmm. and the break room. And that's the only place that we had walls. Otherwise, the whole garage was wide open. And once we started, we did it in phases, because financially, that's what we had to hmm. do. So we just opened a dining room. Right above us is this giant beam. This had a wall going all the way to the front. So you did not see where the bar is today. It was cold storage, and honestly, it still had a lift in it. It still had all his tools in it, his toolboxes. So it was still very much j Auto Repair was still there. Um, once we had the opportunity, um, when we first opened the doors, we had the dining room and the kitchen. In the spring, we opened up the patio. In the summer, we built a beer garden in the backyard. 
And the last phase was to build out the cold storage area, take the wall down and build a full size bar. And that's what we accomplished this year. Nice. Oh, so that's, that's recent, the final phase. That bar is brand new. We just opened that bar in, in October. I think it was in October was the first time. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Wow, okay. So what was the process in converting the, literally the garage into more of a restaurant between codes, running power, oh all the ventilation and everything needed? It was like doing a brand new build. All the codes had, we are now a change of use business, so it was like building a brand new Build, building so we had to go we had to get tremendous amount of, of uh, permits and sit down with architects and sit down with the city which we did before we started the progress uh, the process and we're like this is what we want to do mm-hmm. is this make sense is this right and they guided us on what permits we needed where we needed um, things we needed to change what we could do couldn't do um, and then we just got started doing it literally we just we just dive in yeah we just started taking <laughs> down walls and seeing where that led us to and seeing the condition, like the, the floors are um, not original floors. Mm. The far back is the original floor, but the rest of this was in really poor shape. So we had to uh, you know, dig that all out. We had a company come and do this one side. Uh, the bar side, uh, my son and my husband's took care of, uh, jackhammering all of that and repouring concrete. Um, we did everything. We had to you know, put drywall up on every wall. Mm-hmm. It was all exposed brick, all of the walls, uh, but they had to be covered, mm-hmm. code. So the ceiling, every single part of this place is brand new. The doors, brand new glass doors on both sides of it. So did you did. guys run into any issues when you were building? Like something that you didn't foresee being an issue, and then someone came in and was like, "Listen, this is kind of how things have to go." Oh, I'm sure I did. Yeah, because there's been a lot. We've done a lot of construction here, uh, but the city was really pretty good with us. You know, we because I think we sat down in the beginning and said, "This is what we're thinking. Will this work?" And they kind of directed us on the proper way that we could do mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And we always tried to do it that way. But it's an old building. So, of course, we ran into problems here or there. Um, we just took care of them when we can. And you own the building, correct? It's not like you're yes. a tenant where you had to get things blessed off by the landlord. No. Because then that would have been a, an entirely different conversation. No, it's family owned. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, it, this area behind us here, is mm-hmm. that where kind of the, the coffee cafe previous That's- life came right. from exactly well we did open we did open on a smaller scale mm-hmm. and with that coffee idea coffee shop idea because that's what i knew um in business so we started with that and that's where um our espresso machine is that's why there's an espresso machine sure. there but the more we grew fast very quickly and the our customers were pushing us in a direction um, and we just kind of went with it we brought in live music right away because we love live music, we always went out to see it. We knew opening a business, our life would no longer be ours. Mm-hmm. And if we were gonna hear live music, we were gonna have to bring it in. So we immediately started doing that on a small scale and the customers loved it. And we had started out with beer and wine and then, which they enjoyed too, but then they pushed it even farther. They wanted alcohol. So we put in the plans. We had one more bay of the garage that we didn't touch. And we're like, okay, so this is where the business is going. This is where they want us to be. We're trying to listen to them. And we just moved in that. We followed them. Were the customers barking, like, very vocal and telling you, hey, you should do this? Oh, yeah. They're like, oh, this would be so cool if you did this. Or can I get alcohol? You know, can I have a vodka and tea? I'm like, well, no, I don't serve alcohol. But the more you get asked that, the more it's like, okay, maybe we need to, you know, really consider this. But, yeah, people come to us with ideas all the time, still today. And how does that change with with the city and the state? Because if there's alcohol, does there have to be food? Yes. In the state? Okay. Yes. You have to serve food, which I already had, so that Mm -hmm. wasn't a problem. So the cafe counted as substantial enough food? Oh, I had a substantial menu, yeah. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. What was the menu like then? Uh, well, it, it's not a whole lot different than what we have today. Today is just a little bit larger. Um, it was We opened up with paninis and salads and uh, some hot sandwiches. And seriously, I had a little electric grill. Actually, it was, you know, the little ones you use at home? Yeah. The little <laughs> Presto? <laughs> yeah. Literally, that was my, my grill. And we had a sandwich table and a panini press, and that was it. And, wow. <laughs> seriously. And we were, we were banging out food, and it got really crazy. And I was the one in there banging out the food. And I, was, I went to my husband. I'm like, you need to get in here and learn how to cook because I can't do this. This is just too many. It's just too much. Yeah, seriously. Your wrists are going to fall off. Yeah, it was just nuts. So now we've, we've grown. We have a brand new kitchen, so we have all gas equipment. We have real grills. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, did, did you guys learn how to cook, or did you hire a chef, or nope. what was that? No, nope. I'm the cook. Okay. I learned wow. to cook from my Italian grandmother, sure. from his Italian grandmother. 
And what I didn't, the only things I really had to learn was how to execute things in a restaurant situation. Sure. Where cooking at home in your kitchen, you know, for your family, you know, the food will be ready in 10 minutes just to sit down and wait. When you're in a restaurant, it doesn't work like that. You have a time frame that your customers expect to get food. So those, those executing ways are things that I had to learn, and I just kind of approached them. You know, what is it that I'm trying to get out? How can I get this out so it's still the quality is there, that it, but it's quick enough that the customer is happy. But quality is huge for us. Mm-hmm. It's huge for me. If I don't like the food, I won't serve it. Sure. And I've done, I, I bake, I cook here, and if I'll make a batch of something and it doesn't look right to me, but it tastes delicious, I throw it out. My kids and husband have a fit. But I'm like, no, it's got to be right. It's got to be right. So speaking on that, who gets the mistakes? Because if there's ever oh, mistakes, kids. you can my just call My kids and my okay. husband okay. or my staff. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> feel free to call. We'll, we'll arrive. Yeah, this, my staff and my kids, my kids are grazing daily. Yes, that's awesome. <laughs> so what was it like marketing? Did you do any marketing at the start? Because, I mean, it being a garage, people in the area had to be like, this is a restaurant now? How does that work? Oh, yeah, and it, I can tell you, for a long time, people would walk by, people from the neighborhood, and just all of a sudden one day they were like, isn't this the garage still? And I'm like, it's got a giant patio and a blue awning. It is no longer the garage. <laughs> but, again, that was my weakest area. That's you know, one of the areas I had the least experience in. So I just relied on social media. Mm. Um, I'm pretty creative. I, I like to, you know, I can do a lot of things on the computer. I've learned to make, create posters, and I just kind of hit that really hard, learned mm-hmm. how to do that better, and I just kind of stayed on my social media as much as I could. I didn't have the money right. to spend a ton of money in marketing. Marketing is very costly. Um, some of it works great, but the cost of it, especially at a small, you know, mom-and-pop shop that we are, we couldn't afford to spend that. So mm-hmm. it had to be word of mouth. It had to be flyers I hung out, posters I hung out. And I just hit social media as hard as I could. And then let your food do the talking. I mean, that's and really, let my food, yep. that's so really it. We would go home at night and I would sit because we'd open and close. We still open and close. But I would go home at night and sit on the couch for a half hour. And that's where I would start creating posters and doing everything I had to do so that the next morning I could send it out and then get up and start all over again. So what was your first dish that you were like, this is gonna be, quote, like our flagship dish, like this is something that, that we wanna run with? That would be our Ferrari sandwich, which is a chicken cutlet, a breaded chicken cutlet. Um, one of, in Italian food, I don't know if you guys are Italian or not, oh, yeah. but chicken cutlets are big time, and you gotta make a good chicken cutlet. <laughs> so we took our chicken, hand breaded, we hand pounded ourselves, jacquard it, and um, fry it up on our grills. We throw it just like a milanese with an arugula salad, tomatoes, Italian dressing on top of it, and provolone cheese melted mm-hmm. all over it. And uh, it, it's still the number one selling sandwich. So you went with Ferrari because of the garage aspect. It's a high-end sandwich, it's a high-end yep. car, but also the yep. Italian blend. Right, that's what we tr- did with a lot of our sandwiches. Mostly the sandwiches are named after vehicles, and we kind of made them fit with the sandwiches, like our meatball sandwich, which is homemade meatballs, my homemade sauce, and that's called the Fat Boy. Nice. So, I like that. Just like a Fat Boy. Harley, big fat tires. So, so. Your, your customers came and started providing feedback about you should have a band here. What was the first band, and do you remember any struggles that came with bringing a band into a, a restaurant? Well, hmm. Maybe not what was the first band. Because yeah, I can't might remember be the first bands. Yeah. Um, definitely I had uh, the David Turner group, was mm-hmm. one of the first groups that I had coming in here. Um, a local uh, deadhead band called uh, Genesee Ted, they're out from Batavia. They came into my coffee shop a lot and mm-hmm. uh, played just for fun sometimes. And a great bunch of guys, so they are, of course, one of the first people I brought in. Um, and they love being here. The only problem I have here is that we're such hard surfaces. Right. So the music is banging off of everything. Um, so it's getting the musicians, which most of them handle it perfectly. They just control their their instruments. Mm-hmm. They control their you know their amplifiers and stuff, and it works out pretty well. But we do have plans to put in some soundproofing uh, to help create that you know fix oh, yeah. that problem. Uh, that of course is expensive as well, but sure. it, it's in the plans yeah. to do that. But that was really the only problem indoors. Sure. You know. Yeah. That'll be interesting to see how you guys do that to and keep the garage environment feel because a lot of the soundproofing doesn't give off that type of environment. No, so but I got do you have plan. ideas in mind? I got a plan. I figured you did. I did. So we have a mural behind you. It's, yeah. uh, is there any significance behind that car or that environment, or is it just something that it was a favorite car in the family and you wanted to throw it up? Um, it's just one of the coolest cars mm-hmm. that we've seen. My husband, obviously, being in the auto repair business, uh, he's been a full-time mechanic since he was 15 years old. Um, he did a lot of street racing. Um, so hot rod cars are definitely something that uh, we're meant something to him which we 
I've learned a lot about just being married to him for 32 years. Um, and, and in the house, we're always watching car shows and all that kind of stuff. Um, we've always been Cadillac fans, almost always had a Cadillac. So when we spotted this, we were looking for a mural. What did we want on the wall? And then we spotted this car, a photo of this car, and we're like, I think this is it. And this was actually pretty interesting. I, don't, I didn't tell you guys, I don't even think you guys seen it. So when the, the girl, Nicole Cherry, was the artist doing this, when she started painting it, all of a sudden we stood up and we were like kind of in the area that we are and you look at it, it's got a, looks like it has a very short nose and it mm -hmm. looks kind of like a bug. But it, and we thought something was wrong. So we stopped her and she stopped and she's like, oh my God, what is wrong? We couldn't figure it out and it took us a little bit. And then all of a sudden I happened to walk down to the other end of the room for something and I looked up and there was that long Cadillac. And it's just the angle that she has the car sitting at. So if you start oh. walking from the front of the building and keep your eye on it and walk to the end of the building, it goes from short to long by the time you get to the end of it. It's really pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a little optical illusion. Everyone's like, wait a minute. What, what am I seeing? What's going on here? We'll try to capture that in our uh, Wednesday post leading up to this interview. Okay. So, yeah, that, that's really cool. So she's a local artist? Yes. Actually, Nicole's doing a ton around the city. Okay. A ton of buffaloes with flowers. She's done quite a bit, actually. So speaking on the city and specifically where we are, there was a couple years where it seemed like all of a sudden hurdle boomed. And then the entire street changed, the sidewalks changed, street lights changed, and then it was like a resurgence. And then they started to do it in Elmwood, and then they tried to do it on Seneca Street. Now they're trying to do it in different areas to kind of boost Buffalo back up. But hurdle was kind of the first to figure it out. What do you remember what year range that kind of was? Because you guys were established in 2017. In 2017. I would say it was probably a couple of years before that. I would probably say more like 2014-ish, mm -hmm. something around there. And that was just kind of funding from the city? I think there was some programs that they put out to help them fix their buildings up. And um, our business, people started coming to fill our stores yeah. up and down the street, which was really nice. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we did something, there's a, a business down the street that does an event every Friday, last Friday of the month in the summer, it's called Shop Rock and Stroll. Um, although we don't live in the city any longer, but we still had the auto repair shop here, we came every single Friday because everybody you knew for 40 years was walking up and down Hurdle, shopping, stopping to eat and drink, going back shopping, stopping to eat and drink. That's when we really, when it really struck us that things were really starting to boom mm -hmm. on Hurdle Avenue. I mean, we grew up as kids here, so I did. I window shopped up and down the street since I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just something you got bored at home, you got grabbed your friends, you walked up and down Hurdle Avenue and looked in all the windows at all the different stores. Um, and we had a lot more restaurants and bars mm -hmm. back then. But um, I mean, it's just something that we always did. And it's, it's really exciting to see that it is continuing on. It, it is, of course, support. I mean, we do get some support from the city, but the Hurdle Business Association has also been wonderful in trying to support um, businesses, um, trying to help with whatever. You know, if anybody has an idea of an event to put on, something that's going to boost it, you know, they're, they're happy to, to jump in and support with them and try to do that. Um, making the, the street prettier, trying to get out some flowers. They have a ton of plans to continue doing that. Um, I think a lot of that is what's helped, you know, people want to come back out to Hurdle. It's like Hurdle's where your heart is. So speaking on kind of your generation and our parents' generation too, they always say, you know, back in the 80s or some catchphrase. And then they talk about what a building was beforehand. Do you feel like Hurdle now is kind of how it was in, a, in the past? And if so, do you know what kind of year range? Would you say it's similar to the 80s, or would you say it's just it's just different in its I own way now? I think it's different in its own way. Mm -hmm. Okay. I really do. I think it's Why? different in its own way. Um, well, for one, we don't have the restaurants and bars that we did then. I mean, there was a lot. I mean, you had Hotel California. You had, you had two, three bars on every single block. I mm -hmm. mean, Gables. Gables is still here. Hopefully, we're going to reopen. We grew up in Gables. Okay. You know, we grew up in Geckos. We grew up in a lot of these these places. Um, it has a different feel to it. It does. Um, I don't, of course, I was much younger then, so I don't remember, like, people coming from other neighborhoods into Hurdle Avenue. Sure. Where today, like on Fridays, like I described, everyone that you knew, they don't live here anymore, but they are driving in for that Friday night because they know they're going to see everybody that they grew up with uh, and friends that they made in this community. So people will drive from the outside coming in. I don't remember that happening when we were in the 80s. It was sure. mostly, it was the neighborhood. You know, mm -hmm. we had a, several um, Italian markets on the street. It was all walkable, fruit stands sitting outside 
of their their uh, markets and stuff like that. So it was very much a neighborhood walkable place. It wasn't so much people driving into it. Sure. So what was it like getting staff? So owning a place or having worked at the cafe before, Mm -hmm. you didn't necessarily, were you in charge of hiring staff? Like how did you bring? Yeah, Yeah, it was a very small cafe. It was, yeah, so I didn't have a lot. Um, I just, you know, reach out again on either social media or any of the platforms um, for job searching. Um, Sit down and interview them. I really just look for experience is important for Mm -hmm. sure. But it's the personality. It's, you know, how the person thinks, um, you know, what they can bring to the table. Um, we are very much a family oriented place. I'm a mom before I'm a restaurateur mm-hmm. and I tr- my everyone keeps telling me you own a bar and I'm like I know. I know, but it's hard to to change that. But, you know, if you're good-hearted people, that's what I want this place to be surrounded with good-hearted people because when my customers come in, they feel that. It's like you're walking into my living room. You know, come on in, sit down. Would you like a cup of coffee? Mm-hmm. You know, are you comfortable? I want people to feel comfortable when they walk in my doors in here just as I did in my house. And that's how I want my staff to be. But I also want my staff to enjoy themselves when they're working, sure. you know. So th- that's why I really do look at, at personality. Is this person going to fit with the garage, with the rest of the staff, with the customers that we have? Because that's how you get people to come back. And that's how you get staff to stay. They're not, right. they're not happy or not enjoying where they're going. They're not going to stay. It's great. I mean, you, do, you did that today and you're closed. You guys need yeah. anything? <laughs> Let me wipe this table down. It's just a riot. <laughs> it's awesome. So you... you at some point, you decided to build the bar. Yes. And it, that came from a lot of recommendations, but you did it in a special way because you guys decided to build it yourself. And yes. the bar top itself is a story. Do you want to walk us through? We'll, we'll take pictures for sure. But okay. if And if you're listening to this, you need to come in and take a look at it yourself because it's a beautiful, basically, mural around the it whole bar. So can you explain what the thought process was behind that? Yep. Uh, when we started, we built the bar we knew we wanted it to be unique Um, like everything that we've done in this building there's a piece of us in it there's a piece of our personality in it Mm -hmm. I have um, some of our smaller tables have I I hand painted myself and they have sayings on them some are sayings that I found that I like there are some sayings that I wrote and you can literally read those sayings and you'll know my personality by reading them and how I live life and that's really how we've built everything in here it is a piece of us it is who we are we don't ever try to be somebody that we're not. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of how we did with that. We always pay homage to our history because without our history, we wouldn't be who we are, uh, especially to our family. So the bar top, we knew we wanted it to be unique. Our friend who owns uh, the tattoo shop across the street, Paul Massaro, is a phenomenal artist. He's done all of our artwork. So we, we said, you know, you want to do a bar top mural? And he, was, he jumped in and we wanted it to represent because we stayed on Hurdle Avenue. We've been here for 25 years with the auto repair shop. Now we've been here another five years Mm -hmm. with the garage. Um, We wanted it to represent our beginning and where the direction that we're going. So on the one end of the bar is a picture of this building as it was our auto repair shop, as it was JNL Auto Repair. And as you're going down the street, you'll see some reminiscence of Hurdle Avenue of the homes in the background. But dragging down the street, you're gonna find a lot of cars from the 70s and the 80s hot rods that my husband or his cousins or his fam- friends were driving or building or their motorcycles. Um, in the late 70s and early 80s, he did a lot of street racing down Hurdle Avenue. I, I tell some younger kids that they're going, street racing on Hurdle Avenue? I'm like, yeah, like stop the cars, get the flag, and let's go. That's what they did. And that's what that, that you know, right down the center of the bar is showing is the cars dragging down the street. In the middle of the bar is not the North Buffalo Theater which has been around and been, a, mm-hmm. you know, an icon for our community. And Paul did that. I did not know Paul was doing that. That's something we've known each other for well over 30 years. So he knows us very well. So he surprised us with that. And the buildings around it, he ended up naming them my kids' names. Oh, you know, cool. Sam Sloan, wow. you know, different things like that. Uh, in the marquee, uh, my husband and I lost one of our daughters to cancer when she was 13. So it, the movie playing is My Angel starring Melina. So that was that was a tearjerker. That oh, was yeah, a surprise. Was Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we did not expect that. We had no idea, but it fit us perfectly mm-hmm. because yeah. we make sure she's represented in everything that we do, and family is represented. So it was like that's our staple. Our family is our backbone, 
And as you go down the road, you'll see, of course, Paul's tattoo parlor is in there too. And then at the end, you'll I love see. It. Yeah. He's like, hold on, just, just gotta throw this in Yeah, he's gotta get in there too. He's gotta get in there too. And he should, rightfully so. Sure. And then at the end of it, it shows this building as the garage as it is today. And it's got all the sunlight going to it. Like, that's our future. This is where we're moving forward. This is our positive direction. And, you know, especially coming out of, you know, losing our, jo- our daughter, mm-hmm. uh, his motorcycle accident, you know, a couple pretty hits in life, but we're still moving towards the sunlight. And that's where we're at. So it's, and he hand painted it all. I mean, it took him over 200 hours wow. of painting. Yeah. I, w- we, yeah. Photos can't do it justice. Not you at all. You need to come in and take a look Not at, at all. Yeah. It's pretty special. Yeah. It's incredible. And that's a really beautiful tribute because we knew that there were special aspects to it mm-hmm. and we knew it was your story, but hearing it from you guys is just, that's different. That's a different. Yeah. Way. A lot of people Perfect. look at it, they think it's a vinyl. And I'm like, no, 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 guys. I said, that's hand painted. Then they're like, really? Are you kidding me? I'm like, no. So what was the not to cut you off, What was the stress of like protecting it once it's done? You know what I mean? Because you're like, well, hold on, it's a bar, so like now what? Because well, you know, some I'm dude's less gonna get stressed me. over that than my husband is because it is epoxied, <laughs> okay. so it is pretty well. We had a clear coated. His cousin owns a collision shop, so he clear coated the whole thing. Then we had someone come in and epoxy it, so it is pretty well protected. Yeah. But I can still see my husband's face when someone goes to put a hot coffee or a <laughs> hot plate on it. I'm like, relax, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. Be fine. And it is. It's it's, it's like steel. It's really great. I, I couldn't imagine that because I'm that way. If I get like a new table at the house, it's like, put, where's your coaster? Yeah. Where's your coaster? That's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He's yelling at the bartenders all the time. Did you put the coaster down? Like, get a coaster for these people. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Were there any reservations in putting the bar in when you first started? Because normally sure. it, it attracts a different type of crowd. So right. it, it, it attracts a different set of liabilities, a different mm-hmm. set of worries, a different set of concerns. So for sure it did. It did, but we felt it was something that we needed. We felt it was something that would work really well here. And um, like everything that we do, we just weighed the, the pros and cons. And, and for the cons, we, you know, you try to create a plan, mm-hmm. you know, if certain situations happen, how are we gonna handle this? Um, is this gonna be a big positive or a big negative? And we really believe it's a big positive. And so far it is, is definitely proven to be. Sure. This might be a stupid question and I don't even know if I know the answer to this, but the can you have your liquor license serve alcohol to your sitting guests and not have a physical bar? No, I do not know. Like, Because then that would take away that crowd per se. It, saying that like, it's not a bad thing to have people come in and just sit at the right. bar to drink, but I, I wonder if that's even an option. I don't, I don't know. Well, originally when we first started um, with our full liquor license, I didn't have the bar. So oh, okay. over at my service counter, I had a little mini bar, and that's where we served from. Mm. Okay. Well, then you maybe know, even when we had music, there, yeah. we turned the coffee bar into a, a little small service bar, and, and we did work it that way. But people like to sit at a bar. They sure. like to sit next to people. They like to talk to people. Um, not having a bar actually turned customers away hmm. they would walk in and see this big wall here and they're like you don't have a bar and turn around and walk out the door so it's, it's definitely yeah, people like the socialness of sitting next to another person at a bar they really do yeah so when we came here we filmed a cocktail video with you guys to to showcase some of the the bartender's abilities in the mm-hmm. back um and when we were here we discussed other potential murals we discussed other aspects that you're going to head to like in the future is there anything that's coming up that uh, like, I know that we talked about the back patio. Is right. that something that you want to talk about a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, inside, first, what we're doing is we are partnering with Three Chord. They've been wonderful partners. Um, and we are going to turn our inside stage into a Three Chord stage. And we are painting, having a mural painted on the back walls right now that is going to be just outstanding. I, I, I don't even want to give too much sure. away because I'm just going to say speak easy, bootleggers, Tommy guns. It's going to be nice. like super, super cool. With three chords, like with three bougie chord. twist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're Always. so extra. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're really on board. They just love it, what we're you know planning to do. So it's going to be that little alcove right there, right yep. behind the stage? Yep. Nice. Yeah. The artist That's has so already cool. sketched it, which is very hard to see. He's actually going to start painting this week. Nice. Yeah, that's so exciting. That's going to be really cool. Outside, our um, beer garden, we built our first summer. Um, it was all gravel. It was uh, actually crushed corian. And um, we have picnic tables all over the place. We have a full bar back there. And then we decided to, you know, we wanted to be able to create more seating outside. Mm-hmm. And it's very hard to do on gravel or on, on the crushed quarry. And you can't put regular tables, you can't put regular chairs. So we wanted to upscale the backyard a little bit. And we poured all concrete throughout the whole thing. It's a pretty large backyard. Sure. 
So we poured all concrete through it. We're working on um, adding some roof lines, some little cabanas. We can do some um, bottle service under. Hmm. Um, and we're just trying to get all of that done before we open it fully this summer. We're hoping by the end of July. Uh, we're just really busy in the kitchen work, and so it's not a lot. And again, he does everything, so it's not a lot of time for him to get back there. But And we don't want to open it halfway. We want it to be complete. We want to have the look that we you know, have in our heads for it. We do live music out there as well. We'll have a small stage mm-hmm. outside like we've always done. Um, we have a lot of plans for the backyard, so it's going to be a really cool. A lot of people will go in the backyard, and they'll sit back there, and they'll look at me and go, I don't even know I'm on Hurdle Avenue. Yeah. I'm sitting back here, and I don't even feel like I'm in the center of the city. No. It's just that comfortable and cozy, and, and you know, we're just going to upscale that coziness a little bit. we got a sneak peek of it, and you're right. It does feel almost like the South Towns Yeah. Vibe. And it's a big lot. Like it is. For the area. Yeah, it's huge. It makes no sense. It's yeah. like, where did this, how? Where did all this come from? Well, it did house like 40 parts cars for 25 <laughs> years. <True. laughs> yeah. So when we were also here, I had probably one of the best breakfast sandwiches I've ever had in my life. So okay. when did you want like breakfast food? Well, um, again, for my little cafe, mm-hmm. I did open on the weekends and I did do um, like little brunch sandwiches and stuff like that. I started uh, making homemade cinnamon rolls out there. So when I came here, breakfast food is big in North Buffalo. It's Mm -hmm. big in the city. And there really isn't a ton of places. It's big in Buffalo. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I don't think you can pass one right now that summer's here and teachers are all off and kids are all home from school that doesn't have a line outside it every single morning. Um, So just to be able to do bring brunch on Sunday, you know, we always planned on doing that. We were definitely going to do that. My cinnamon rolls went crazy out in Akron, which is where my coffee shop was. So I said, I'm definitely going to bring that here. And we figured, well, if you're doing brunch on Sunday, you might as well do it on Saturday. So we do brunch Saturday and Sunday mornings and brought the breakfast menu in. And the cinnamon rolls are out of control, really. (laughs) People love them. I love making them for them. But it does surprise me how how much the cinnamon roll is just, you know, taken off. I had someone in here uh, who loved it, put it out there on her social media and called us the best cinnamon roll in Buffalo. And next thing I knew, I had lines out the door. And I didn't have rolls for them because I was like, what is happening? (laughs) And then I went from making, you know, three trays a week to making, you know, a day to making, you know, 18. I think I was up to 18 dozen a weekend. Wow. And it was, yeah, it was a lot. But, I mean, it was wonderful. It was crazy. I feel bad for the oven. Yeah, <laughs> the um, thing is just nonstop. The oven, feel bad for me. It was, <laughs> yeah. it was me baking all of those. I figured you had, like, help with that many. No, no, I do them all myself. All hand-rolled? All hand-rolled. That's too much. Yeah, fresh and hand-rolled. That's too much. That's... Yeah, it works. <laughs> goodness how big are they uh they're they're a good size they're about like this high they're about like that i make them higher than wider but they're they're a good size nice people cut them in four take them home cut them in four and they eat them for like you know the week they just pick it's fascinating too because you hit such a it's an actual population of buffalo where it's trendy to get all your friends in brunch hop Yep. And then mm-hmm. each Sunday you pick a different place and it's, it's a thing. Like it's yes. an actual thing that happens here. Yep. And most people don't understand that. They're just like, oh, we'll go to our favorite place. It's the same place every week. It's like in Buffalo, you literally go to a different place each week. Yes. So you having that option, mm-hmm. your first week was probably just like, well, here we go. And then yep. you put the sign down and all of a sudden they all just like flock like birds. <laughs> it's just like taking pictures outside. Yeah. So it was insane. After the cinnamon bun, um, what else was offered? Did you have like paninis and then other, like the breakfast sandwich we had, like Derek said, was great. Right. Um, we always did the breakfast sandwiches. Um, then we brought in, we started, I, I didn't have the equipment to fry eggs. And I didn't have the big enough equipment to fry multiple eggs at one time that I would get in. A, so I just thought, like I do, how, how could I accomplish this? Um, we do a St. Joseph table. We grew up doing St. Joseph tables, making Italian omelets, egg omelets, are one of the main things on a St. Joseph table. And his grandmother taught me how she makes it. It's basically, she. we would make it in a frying pan, but it's just as easy to bake the same mm. idea. So I thought, I'm gonna mix up my eggs, I'm gonna throw it in my cookie tray, and I'm gonna bake it in the oven. And it worked. So instead of frying eggs, I made, I would make like five, six trays uh, in the morning for that service, and we would cut them in nice big squares, and that was their egg on their plate for their breakfast with their home fries and their bacon or their sausage, their toast. The whole thing. Very clever. Yeah. It worked. The hardest part was getting the liquidy egg from the table to the oven without spilling. I bet. Otherwise, it was, you know, but it worked. It really did. We did that for the first two years. Wow. Yeah. You're just a creative person. I feel like you guys are very creative. 
Oh, I, I just feel like you have to be, because if you don't, the whole neighborhood's going to start screaming at you again. Oh, <laughs> you well, know? they do. Yeah. <laughs> when there's something. <laughs> yeah, they do sometimes about, about silly little things, and I'm like, you know, I, I'm one person. I'm really doing the best we can. Yeah, seriously. Did yes. you always... With the buns. They're like, well, why don't you make more? And I'm like... <laughs> They're very time-consuming for stuff to make. You don't just go and bake in an hour. You have rolls. It's like a four-hour process. So I'm like, it's not something you can just do, and it takes time. And I'm like, I really make as many as I can. See, it's another cinnamon bun lover, man. Yeah, no. <laughs> I love making cinnamon buns. It's do you? Lifestyle. Yeah, you I don't too? It. Yeah. He, he knows. He's had one of my famous yeah. cinnamon buns. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they're not as famous as yours, but in, in my little <laughs> small circle of like three people, it's great. That's, that's okay. That's wonderful. That's right. Did you always have the patio outside, or was that an afterthought to incorporate the garage doors? Well, we always wanted to put the patio, but we opened the doors. We opened in January, so we could, obviously it's the wintertime. Mm-hmm. We're not using a patio, but kind of, as soon as April came, we started building, and we put it out immediately. So what are your hours then? Um, we're closed on Monday and Tuesday right now. We're open for evening service at 3 o'clock on Wednesday and Thursday. Friday, we're open all day for lunch uh, into the evening, so 11 o'clock we open. Saturday, we open at 10 o'clock for breakfast. We run brunch till about 2.30, and then we're open on all evening long as well. Sunday, we open for brunch at 10, and we close at 3. Wow. And we'll expand more hours. Once we get the beer garden open and uh, you know increase the staff like we need to do, we will be opening more hours. That's perfect. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, this just seems like a sweet place. Like I, Thank you. we came here the one time, and it's just like, how come I've never been here before? Yeah, there's a lot of places in Buffalo where we literally leave and we just get super upset. But this was different because it literally brought in the whole family dynamic mm-hmm. more so than other locations throughout the city where it's like mentioned but not built around. Yeah, I think that's the difference. But and it's everything makes sense. Like. You have booths against the wall, and then you have chairs against the side. Then you have chairs here and tables in the middle. And then you have two, three, basically three rows of tables, yes. then the bar. Right. So you have both dynamics being hit inside of an open space. It just, I don't know, it flows and, and it's busy. The cushions, were those made to look like car interiors? Because, or is that just me no. just saying that? No, they were, that's how they were when we found them. We got them. Um, actually, a friend of ours had them stuffed in a, in a warehouse he had, and I recovered the backs. Oh, wow. We just went with that. Yeah, my brother-in-law came in, and I did, I did need to say this. As you were saying that how family we are and stuff, and, and we are, but I have to say, building this place out, we could have never done without our family, our kids giving up so much of their time, our closest friends here every day helping us build. Or this would have never happened. Um, the way that it did. So we didn't do this. I keep saying, you know, we did this and we do it all ourselves. We didn't do it all ourselves. Without our family and our friends, this would never, would not be here sure. today. But um, Yeah, I, but, I but coming from you, when you say we, it's obviously the tribe. Like yes, the it is. We are very up. much a tribe. Yeah. We don't change much. <laughs> we just awesome. add. We add people to the tribe. Perfect. That's the most yeah. Italian thing I've heard <laughs> in a very long time. <laughs> That's cool. So social media, what are your social media handles? How can people get a hold of you? When you have bands here, do you post that on your social media? I do. Okay. Um, right now, I do have a website being built. Um, it's not ready yet. Um, but I am on Facebook and Instagram, and it is Garage Cafe Lounge. Okay. Um, we are um, transitioning to uh, the Garage Bar and Restaurant. Um, we're just starting to make that change. But right now, all of our handles are the Garage Cafe and Lounge. What's the thought process behind the rename? Because we're much less of a coffee shop mm-hmm. um, than we are. We're, we are very much fully a bar and a restaurant now as opposed to the coffee shop. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important that people see you as you are and name matters. And a lot of times people will look at a name and say, oh, that's not the place for me. No, we're not going to go there. It's a cafe. I don't want to sure. go there. Whatever the reasonings or whatever they're looking for that night. Um, so I just think it's important that your brand says who you are. And this is who we've transitioned to. This is who we've grown into. So that's why I think it's important that we, we make that transition. So initially, it was your thought to be smaller. Yes. And then at one point, you're just like, do you ever reflect on that and be like, kind of be in awe of how far you've come? In this business, I'm, I would say yes, because I really do fly by the seat of my pants. <laughs> we really do. We, we, we come across a, an obstacle or an idea and we're like, all right, never did this before, certainly not in this industry. How am I going to work this out? Sure. How, am I gonna, how are we going to achieve this? And we just come up with a bunch of plans, a bunch of ideas and rule out the ones that don't work the most or cost the most. And uh, we work it out. So definitely. And it's credit to you guys and your staff as well, because 
the, the industry as a whole, not just in Buffalo, but in general, the restaurant industry is so cutthroat, like one bad meal could literally put you out of business. Right. So to stay afloat as long as you have with growth and everything else and being a stable business on Hurdle Ave is mm -hmm. commendable. I mean, it has to be because it says a lot to stay open this long here mm -hmm. in this city, mm -hmm. in that industry. Yeah. So credit to everybody here. Yeah, no, I have a wonderful staff. I really do. We're small right now. But um, they really just, and there's so many changes changing every day that they just roll with it. I'm like, okay, we're not doing it that way today. We're going to go with this way. And they just kind of rolled with us. Um, they're very much team oriented, which is how we are. You know, we really believe collaboration is the key in everything in life. And if you don't have that, there's no sense in doing what you're mm -hmm. doing. Um, so most of all the staff that I have that sticks around, I should say has got to be team oriented and they are and they work very hard for us especially you know in the kitchen they work very long hours mm -hmm. uh, and they are very they have learned to be very picky about what they put out because i insist that food goes out the same way that i cooked it or that i taught them how to cook it so that you have to have consistency do they call you work mom yet i have a couple of them coming See? <laughs> i have one calls me mama i have one calls me <laughs> work family yes Good I deal. do. <laughs> That's sweet. Well, is there anything else that you want to talk about? Because we, we want to be conscious of your time, and it's just this has been a great conversation. Is there anything else that we didn't talk about? Uh, I think we really hit everything on the head. I mean, I'm so appreciative of you guys to come mm -hmm. over here, you know, to help us. I mean, this helps us move forward as well, getting our word out of what we do and what we're trying. We're really working hard to, to build this business to stay sustainable, um, to help our employees stay employed, all of, that, all of that. And you guys, you know, being here today are helping us do that, and we really appreciate it. All I'd like to say is just, you know, keep watching our pages. Um, we have bigger and better things coming. We're working as fast as we can to get the beer garden open because, believe me, we get asked 17 times a day. <laughs> <laughs> when are we opening it? And we're like, as soon as we possibly can. And you will know because it'll be a big, giant party. Awesome. But I, I really appreciate you guys coming out. Well, Absolutely. Thank you. Everybody go check them out on Instagram and Facebook at the Garage Cafe and Lounge. And come in here and grab something delicious because the Ferrari chicken. The Ferrari sandwich. The Ferrari sandwich is where it's at. So thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks so thank much, you. guys. Thanks.